West Coast. Good afternoon, East Coast. Hello to everybody in between and outside. It's Ian the Off Kilter Crafter. I hope you're having a great day today. It is Sunday once again. We have just passed Thanksgiving, and I hope everybody celebrated a wonderful Thanksgiving. If you celebrate Thanksgiving here in the United States, and if you're outside of the United States, then I hope you had a great Thursday. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. We had a little bit of a mix up. I don't know how, but somehow the computer system decided to jump and take literally, it took Becca's. Uh, live that she was doing for Mufasa and somehow imported it into my settings and it was a whole mix up. But we're live here now and I'll take the other video down in a little bit. So if you are, if you see two events, that's what's happening. I don't know what happened. Technology. Gotta love it. Hope everybody's having a great day today. Uh, we've got Guess Who is, uh, let's see, whoa, where was my mouse? Thank you very much. Uh, we got Guess Who Nancy, we got Linda, we got Ken Show, uh, Brenda, which Brenda, hello, we just met her over at the Krabby Quilter yesterday. Uh, we have Andrea, Barbara, Kathy, Jean, Nina, um, Barbara Diane, Donnell is here, Zandra is here, Liz is here, so be it quilts or Fallon. Hello, Fallon. Good to see you. Is the first is the first uh, husband of quilting there as well? Becca is here. Uh, Nancy, I hope you do feel better soon. I'm sorry to hear that you are sick. Uh, hi, Deborah. Good to see you again. Uh, and yeah, so today we're going to be working on putting together the Cozy Posy Triangle Quilt. We've been working on this quilt all month. And today we're going to put together the final assembly. I know that I'm not going to finish it here on the live stream today. We're going to go for the usual like hour and a half, two hours putting it together, but I will not be able to finish it all completely. After the live is over, I'm going to take this away and do my homework and finish it up. I will post pictures on my social media, so make sure to check that out. And I'll also uh, show it here as well. So don't don't freak out. You won't miss it. I do. Nina is in the chat and I do want to reach out to Nina really quickly. Nina sent me some pictures of the quilt that she is working on. And if it's OK with Nina, I would like to show them here on my live stream. It takes about 30 seconds for my voice to hit your airwaves. So I'm going to wait about 30 seconds and see if Nina is OK with that. Um, I would love to show it off, Nina. So if you'll give me your permission, I can pull it up really quick and show everybody your beautiful quilt that you're working on. She emailed me this morning with pictures of the quilt that she's working on, and it is absolutely stunning, and I would love to show it off. So Nina, if you are still here, would you please let me know if it's okay to show off your quilt? I would love to show it off. Uh, so yesterday was, was a lot of fun. If you didn't catch it, uh, hi, Pat Strawhouse, welcome. Uh, if you didn't hear on Friday Night's Live, both Friday and Saturday, Becca, Mary, and I decided to do some quilt shop hopping of our own. And thank you, Nina. I appreciate that. I'll show it here in just a second. So um, we did some quilt shopping. We went to several different quilt shops across the Northern Virginia and Maryland area. It was so much fun. Had a great time. I will be talking about those stores uh, in a vlog and, and I will be doing a live stream where I do a huge hurl video, haul video, but I always say hurl video, don't know why, uh, but I will be doing a haul video where I show all the goodies that I bought in all the different quilt stores and uh, we'll probably make that a live for December 3rd, I think. We'll probably make that just a haul video. Uh, a haul live, I should say, and we'll just, we'll go through everything that I picked up. I'll talk about the different quilt stores. It's just going to be a lot of fun hanging out and saying, uh, seeing what all I brought home with me. Um, so Nina, she sent me a message and, and I wanted to show off the quilt that she is working on. I don't know what fabric line this is. Nina, if you would pop that into the chat for everyone. Uh, this is the quilt that she is working on. Uh, it is absolutely gorgeous. I love these colors. I love everything that she's doing with it. It is looking really, really pretty, and I cannot wait to see the final product. Hey, Sean, good to see you. Uh, so yeah, this is what it's looking like, and cannot wait to see her with the final uh, project as it comes to be. She said she is trying to work on making it. Thank you, Sean, I appreciate that. Um, she's trying to make it where she's not losing so much off the sides. There's a lot of empty spaces. And so she is working on figuring out how to make it work so that way she can get uh, the spaces taken up and she's not having to waste so much fabric. 
but she did a great job. Thank you, Nina, for letting me show it off to everyone. It is absolutely stunning, and I cannot wait to see your finished quilt when it all comes together. So, so yeah, so let's go ahead and start sewing. I have, I put together my rows. I laid this quilt out on the floor. I have put together all of my rows and I am going to start putting everything together in the final quilt. This quilt does go not exactly on point, but it goes diagonally. When you're putting the final assembly together, it is going to go diagonally. Now, the best part about this quilt, there are no seams to line up. You don't have to worry about lining up seams in perfect places. So you're actually going to be kind of shifting your rows just slightly. Now, the more you shift them, the more waste you'll have on the edge as you're trying to square up your quilt. But if you go, the pattern suggests two or three inches as a good landing spot. So that way it doesn't, it looks intentional and doesn't look like you just kind of missed your uh, seams a little bit. If you don't know the pattern or want to follow along with the pattern, you can check it out down in the description of this video. Uh, you can go down there and grab the pattern and check it out. Uh, Joydi is asking, is that your design? This is the Cozy Posy Triangle Quilt. She has been using that uh, pattern to make this quilt. So that's what she's using. Uh, hi, So So Fun Creations. Good to see you. Let's see, Nina. Ro so uh, Nina is using Robert Kaufman Batiks. Uh, she used fat quarters from different bundles. Thank you for letting me know what that is. I really appreciate that. All right, so let's get to sewing. I have, I took a picture when I laid it out on the floor. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna double check my picture as I go along to make sure that I'm not sewing something incorrectly. So I don't know where I put, the, I bet I left the clips over uh, on the other side of the room. I'm just gonna throw them there for now. But yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna go ahead and I need to sneeze really badly. <laughs> Excuse me guys, I'm so sorry. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing. I'll probably leave this mostly on face cam today because there's no no real need to see my workspace as I'm going through it today but if there's something that I need to highlight I will bring that up otherwise we're just going to sew like normal. Lynn says good evening Ian, Becca and everyone can chat for a bit but don't uh, uh, don't have to cook dinner tonight but had Sunday lunch with my daughter and my daughter-in-law yum or oh, granddaughter excuse me very nice excellent so we are just going to be sewing this together. Like I said, we're not gonna finish it on the live today, but I promise you when it is all said and done, I am going to show it off, I promise. And congratulations to Som, uh, excuse, thank you, thank you everyone, bless you, appreciate it. Uh, congratulations to Sean for getting his 100th episode of his podcast out. Uh, I think it went live today, I'm not 100% sure, but congratulations Sean on 100 episodes of your podcast. Ooh, excuse me. Mary says, good afternoon, quilty friends. I'm sewing a baby quilt, so we'll be listening. Excellent. And the best part about this quilt is like, this one is just slightly shorter and that is okay because I, it doesn't have to be perfect. I, I can guarantee you there are going to be some weird seams on this one and that is perfectly fine because of how it's going to go together in the end. It doesn't really matter. <sighs> Ooh, excuse me. I don't know. Something just like went up my nose right there out of nowhere. Anywho. How was everybody's Thanksgiving? I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving if you celebrated and had family over, or even if you didn't, if you had Thanksgiving alone. Uh, I've done Thanksgiving alone for a past couple, not last year. Thankfully, I was here last year, and I was here again this year. But in years past, uh, I, my roommate would go spend the holiday with her family, and so I would have the apartment to myself, and I would just go to... Cracker Barrel and get their Thanksgiving dinner and enjoy a nice Thanksgiving by myself. Oh, excuse me. Fallon says, I'm editing, but I would rather be sewing. Well, the sooner you can get the editing done, the sooner you can be back at your sewing machine, right? Oops. So 
So this one, it's it's a little hard with this quilt because the way the everything kind of lines up, um, it can get a little mind trippy. Your mind kind of goes a little trippy as you're like, wait, how does this fit together? Does this part go there? That part goes here. So it definitely took me a moment when I laid everything out on the floor and I'm glad I laid it out on the floor because it helped me see where everything lands, how it all lands, all that kind of stuff. But it definitely played with my mind a little bit because I was like, wait, how, how does this all work? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, da, 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 da. Deborah says work, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Deborah at work says I got stuffed. All the food was especially good because I did not have to cook it, but my son and I are cooking a turkey meal on Tuesday. I think that sounds delicious. Becca and her family got a turkey and a ham and it was absolutely delicious. All the food was delicious. Her family brought over stuff. Um, Mary brought some wonderful uh, sweet potato casserole stuff. Uh, there was ambrosia salad. There was a little bit of everything and it was very, very delicious. And I appreciate them letting me uh, crash their Thanksgiving. All right, we're gonna go, do I wanna go that way? I think I actually wanna turn this one this way. Yeah, we're gonna turn this this way and that's perfect. I'm looking at the next row and I'm gonna land just fine. So no problem there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Catherine says, I am making triangle pillows, triangles with uh, Pokemon fabric. Very cool. <laughs> uh, I spent the day with my dog and we had Cheetos. Bahaha, ha. family has, uh, Friday is the family dinner. Excellent, excellent. Cheetos sounds like a good way to spend the day. I like that. Gosh, I don't know what I got like right before I went live. I started like my, um, Allergies or something started kicking up. And of course, it's right before the live, right? Like, would not be alive without some kind of problem. Gosh, it scared me too, because I, I don't know how in the world I jumped over onto that other uh, video, but somehow I did, and Becca comes running in going, you're going live in the wrong place. And I was like, I don't know how I did that. It was a bit of a freak out moment, but it is all good now. All right, so that is like one of the fastest rows that is goes together. Uh, I will have a little piece here that gets sewn in, but for now, this is what it's looking like. And man, this is gonna be so cool when it goes together. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clip this all back together. What did I do with that clip? There it is. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this back on so that way it I know which one it is. I want Cheerios now. As long as they're Honey Nut. I don't like the regular Cheerios. I like Honey Nut Cheerios. All right, so we're gonna work on our next row, which is from, I labeled mine by letter. So I did A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So my next row is going to be row B. Do, 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 do. Cool, all right, so I'm gonna work on my next row. This one goes up, this one goes down. So we're gonna sew these together. And I did, what I did is I actually took some of the leftover pieces. They're not leftovers, but um, I basically cut triangles in half. So that way I could, um, have some extra pieces to add in so that way I don't have to cut off so much of the excess to square it up. June says, I love your fabrics and how, they go how they're going together. It's really nice. I am really excited for what this is gonna look like when it all comes together. I am looking at my picture over there because it is hard to keep these fabrics uh, oriented. So I thankfully took a picture before I uh, took it all back up off the floor. And so I can kind of see like which fabrics go where, how did I have them oriented? 
um, all that information. So I'm glad I did that. It is very helpful to me for sure. Street corn Cheetos? How did I miss them? That sounds so, that sounds really good. Did I say Cheerios? I meant Cheetos. I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I'm just hungry for breakfast. Maybe that's what it is. I'm just hungry for breakfast. Although I had donuts this morning. I went and did a Dunkin' Run uh, this morning when I got up and uh, yeah. Happy birthday, Randy. Apparently Randy's birthday is soon. I missed that comment, but happy birthday. I did say Cheerios. I did say Cheerios. Thanks, Becca. I meant, I meant, oh, and this was another thing. I will turn it on to the overhead camera for just a second because I did add a couple of, and I saw this in Nina's quilt as well. I made some of these, I had leftovers triangles that were not used in anything else. And so I made my own triangle pieces that have just a mishmash. I call them my E triangles basically, because these were not originally in the pattern, but to add a little bit more to the quilt and make it a little bigger, I added some triangles that had all three triangles in it. And I think it is going to add a perfect uh, little touch into it with adding more fabric and adding a little bit more to it basically. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this on here we're going to add this on here like this now you'll notice in nina's layout she actually did it with the same like stripes all in one column and then um all sorts of different like orientations i guess uh let's actually flip this over um which is perfect and i love the way that she did that i am doing mine a little bit different. I basically laid it out and just kind of tried to randomize everything as much as possible. So mine is gonna, mine's gonna look kind of scrappy when it's all said and done with how uh, I laid everything out. But I kind of think that's gonna work with these neons and I can't wait to see the final product. Do, do, do. Auntie L says, hi, I'm tardy because I was dropping off my niece at the airport. She's headed back home to Utah. We'll safe flight to her. It was very nice of you to drop her off at the airport, but I hope she has a safe flight back home and that you get to see her again soon. Andrea says, uh, awesome. I wanted mine larger too. It's nice to see both of yours. Why did this... What did I do wrong? I did something wrong. Oh, I know what I did wrong. <laughs> Where's the seam ripper? See, that's what I get for going live. Do you see, do you see what I did wrong? I wanna show y'all. I, I, I knew this, I, as I was going through it, I was like, this is not right. This is, something's wrong here. Do you see what I did wrong? I was supposed to sew this down on the bottom and instead I sewed it onto the side. So I'm gonna grab the seam ripper really quickly. Already off to a great start. Uh, but I'm gonna do a quick little seam rip and then it will be just fine. Sewing with Luane says, I had three big Texas honey buns for breakfast. Mmm, that sounds yummy. That, so that is the danger working on this quilt is like you can get it to the wrong, you can try and sew it on to the wrong point and I sure did. So as you're putting this quilt together, just double check yourself. I highly suggest laying it out and taking a picture of it before trying to actually sew everything together. Makes it a little bit easier. Nina says, my final layout will be more like yours. So it sounds like she's gonna go back through and kind of clean it up a little bit. And not clean it up, I didn't mean that. But she's gonna change it up a little bit and go more towards what I am doing with mine. 
and sit that over there. So that way, hopefully I don't need it anymore, but it's bound to happen at some point, right? All right, so that's how I wanted it. We're gonna do that. I got it right this time. Uh, Katrina says, good afternoon. I just put the finishing touches on the Star of Hope. It is ready to gift next week. How awesome. Congratulations on finishing that. Do, 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 do. So I'm going to go right about there. I think that's going to be okay. And it came unthreaded. Goodness gracious. That is one thing that I don't like about the Jukies. It comes unthreaded very easily. Oh, why did I do that? There's snips hanging right here. Duh. I keep trying to remember to put the needle down so that way, like as I'm futzing around over off to the side, um, I put the needle down so that way it won't hopefully untangle or it won't come unthreaded as easily. There we go. But that is just one thing that I do not like about the Jukies. They come unthreaded very quickly and very easily. All right, I think I got it now. There we go. All right, back on track. Uh, did I did figure out what to do with the edges, Ian. Oh, I'm so glad, Nina. I'm glad she emailed me, like I said earlier, she emailed me showing it off to me and then she said that she wasn't sure what to do with the edges, but it sounds like she may have a plan. Do, do, do. Constance asks, hello Ian, how was Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving was wonderful, thank you very much. Becca and her family welcomed me into their Thanksgiving uh, and made me feel a part of their family. It was wonderful and had a lot of fun. And yummy, yummy, yummy food. Uh, considering that the backing fabric went from North Carolina to Kansas to South Dakota before heading to Florida, I'm gonna have it done. The Missionaries that are going to be, will be doing, oh, excellent, very cool. Very, very cool. We got Becca jumping on microphone here in a moment. Give her a moment to get settled in and she will say hello to everybody. Hello to everybody. There you go. <laughs> I am in my PJs, so I will not be making an appearance on camera. <laughs> But I That's figured right. after I had my little snack of chips, I could come in here and read some comments for you while I'm cutting my strips. And I appreciate that very much. Plus those strips are gonna be, you'll be ready to start sewing as soon as I'm done uh, with my live today. Yeah. She got a lot of fabric for some really fun projects that she's gonna be working on. <sighs> I love that um, make your own tree skirt pattern mm -hmm. that y'all got that's gonna be really neat yeah you can show them this is a shabby fabrics pattern if you want to show on camera i don't yeah. need this part so it uses the uh june taylor interfacing like the pre-printed batting to make a tree skirt but the pattern gives you instructions to turn it into a bargello so it's going to be like a Bargello. Yeah. And if you're curious about what fabrics that I'm using, just to totally steal the show, apparently. No, not at all. These are the fabrics that I'll be using for my tree skirt. So we got some really nice crisp... Ooh, wow, trying to drive on this thing is crazy. I'm like, where's the camera? How do I hold it? <laughs> yeah. So we got some really good reds and greens and then some whites. I'm holding it wrong, so there's some whites back here as well so we've got some really fun colors and i i think if i did this right um if i counted this right i think i did you can you can totally buy the yardage 
from the according to the pattern you're gonna have a good bit of scrap i'm and this is all my scrap like, wow that's a lot there's of a lot fabric of fabric left over yeah so you could totally do it that way or you could actually just use a jelly roll because you're gonna cut your fabric into two and a half inch by with the fabric strips uh -huh. and then sub cut from there so if you have a christmas jelly roll you could there make you that the bargello oh yeah absolutely mm -hmm. Katrina asked how shopping was yesterday. It was absolutely fun, uh, great and fun. <laughs> and we had a blast checking out stores. Mm -hmm. um, went to several different ones. Uh, we went to, um, shoot. I know we went to the um, Krabby Quilter, which was a lot of fun. We did. Uh, we also went to the... Material girls. Material girls. That's what I was mm -hmm. kept trying to call it like material chic girl or something like that. <laughs> no, I don't know what I was trying girls. to say. Material and three girl little birds. Fun. And three little birds. That was also a lot of fun. And then we went back, back to, to Quilter Studio. Studio. Which, if you guys are in the Facebook group, make sure to check out the post that Ian put because tomorrow they're having a Cyber Monday sale, which has the same special from Black Friday. Yeah. All of their full price uh, yardage. Full price yardage is half off. Yeah. It's on their website. So. And I got Tula half off, which yeah. was amazing. So yeah. definitely check it out. It is a Cyber Monday sale. So you'll definitely want to check it out. Even if you're not here in Virginia, you'll still want to check it out because it is a cyber sale. You will have to pay shipping, obviously. But yeah. it's, it's you're, you're getting half off. So that's. You'll get 50% off. Yeah. It is my local quilt shop. The owner does know me by name. So if you just left a little comment on your order, it was like, so Becca or Becca Schiffler or whatever told me to come shop here. That would be great. Becca I won't get me. anything for it, but it'd be kind of cool for her to see yeah. how many people shopped there because they heard about it from me. Absolutely. Somebody asked a question and I missed it. Uh-huh. Um, Oh, Ian, is that a picture of your layout on the table? So this right here on my iPad is the layout that I'm working on. Uh, I'm using this picture on my iPad so that way I can see how I laid it out and reference it to make sure that I, I, I'm sewing it correctly when I'm doing each of these pieces because I, I did sew it wrong just a second ago. I put it on the wrong side and... Felt pretty silly, but it will be all good when it comes together. Katrina wants to know if we found any crabs. Uh, I did find crabs. Yep. I, I left the Krabby Quilter with crabs. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> um, I think that's actually going to be the title of my vlog. Uh, I got crabs. I got crabs. Uh, I did, just, just, just to be silly, I did buy a fat quarter of crab fabric because I could not go to the Krabby Quilter without leaving and getting some crabs, so... Louise wants to know what company makes the Mickey Christmas. It is from Camelot Fabrics. The the which one? Mickey. Oh, I. It's that, Camelot Fabric. There you go. There you go. Link to shop is in the Facebook group. Yeah. So if you go over to Sobeka's Facebook uh, group. Um, you search, uh, I almost said search YouTube. No, search <laughs> Facebook for, uh, what is the name of, I know it's Sobeka. The Quilter Studio. Oh, it's Sobeka and Friends. Yeah, the name Sobeka of the, and Friends. You can also go to the website. Just Google search Quilter Studio in Fairfax, Virginia. Yep. You can do that as well. In fact, I'll get the link. It just takes me a Thank minute because so I'm not on a computer. She's on mobile, so it takes her... A second longer. Uh, Deborah okay. says, broke until the middle of December. I may be broke after all the shopping that I did over the weekend. So I feel you. I feel you. I... So Joyce wants to know, did you find the fabric that you need for the charm pack that you and Becca did? I did find the fabric. Unfortunately, not at any of the quilt shops, but I did get somebody who reached out and let me know that they have some and are <laughs> sending it in my direction. So yes, I did find the fabric and I am super excited to be able to finish that quilt with what I intended. I could have worked on it and made it work, but I, I'm so excited uh, to have that fabric and to make it Make it as I intended it. And Mary is challenging you to use, because you're getting a half yard of it yep. sent. 
which is probably more than he needs. Yep. So whatever is left, he has to put a little piece of that fabric in all of his projects right, until exactly. it's gone. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to find a way to incorporate that fabric in like every single project I do until it's completely gone. Uh, so Catherine has asked you this like five times. Sorry, Catherine. Are you having any bias problems with your quilt? I have not had any bias problems per se, but I definitely like I know that I'm trying to be careful with it because if you're not careful with it, you could end up getting those bias problems. And so I am definitely taking it very carefully as I'm as as I'm putting this quilt together. So yes, you you can easily have some bias problems. In this quilt, I'm also uh, noticing that like I am having some very wobbly uh, seam lines, uh, not necessarily the seams, but like my my quilt lines are kind of jagged. And that's the good part about this quilt is it doesn't matter. Uh, I will kind of finesse and work with it and make it work. But it thankfully, the seams don't have to line up everywhere and so I can make this the way that I want it and work with it as as much as I need to in order to make it happen. Nikki says I recently started watching so yeah I watched it twice and spent more <laughs> than I planned to plus VR games for my grandson's Christmas gift I'm broke until payday and I also saw somebody say Auntie L said broke until 2047. <laughs> <laughs> Lori. <laughs> Oh boy, I'm sorry. I may be broke through Christmas for sure. <laughs> Sewing with Loin said, Becca, I think someone in the Jenny's Countdown to Christmas, uh, some I think someone got your Countdown to Christmas boxes. Some people are getting two of them by accident. Oh no. Um, no, they didn't. Because sadly, the reason I didn't get my box is because I didn't order it. <laughs> <laughs> Total Oops. mishap on my end. Oops. Yeah. Um... Nina said she just emailed me, so let me pop into my email really quick. I'm not going to be able to show it on the computer, but I can't. Oh, wow, this is so pretty. Let me make sure I'm not sharing your email anywhere. No, you're... I got all your personal information removed, but I'm going to hold this up for the camera to see. Give it a second to focus, but that is... That is the layout that she's going to go with for this quilt. Guys, that is just gorgeous. I love that. Uh, that's going to look really, really pretty, Nina. So good job. Good job on working on that. Let's go back to the picture. I'm now working on my next row. So there we go. All right. So I'm going to pull out my next row and we'll work on row C. Did anybody else work on this? Is anybody else working on this project? I would love to see yours. You can email me or tag me on Instagram if you are working on it and show me what you are up to. Let's see, how do I want to do this? Okay, so this is starting it off and it goes like, goes like this. Okay, there we go. Uh, yesterday, we started the day off by going live with Sean over on his channel. Uh, Brecky Bre Bre with right. Sean. Brecky with Sean, I always mm -hmm. get it wrong. Brecky with Sean. We had a great time and a great discussion with him, uh, talking about everything. I, I did see in the comments, everyone was like, Ian was so quiet. Is he okay? <laughs> I, I was just tired uh, and I hadn't had coffee yet. So I was a little quiet. And also there was some really great conversation going on between Sean and Becca. And I definitely didn't want to interrupt the, fl interrupt the flow with something unrelated or anything like that. So, uh, no, I, I was totally fine. I just didn't have anything to interject at that moment and didn't want to run anybody over in conversation. So well, that was kind of you. I didn't even realize I was talking. That oh much. no, not at all. Like there, y'all were having a good flow and there was, I didn't really have anything to add to the conversation at that moment. So, uh, it was all good. All good in the hood. All good in the hood. Hmm. I agree. Do 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 do. So Terry says I'm making this one too, but I'm going rogue, trying to create a secondary pattern. Awesome! That's exciting. Excited to see what that might look like. Cannot wait. Cannot wait to see it all. 
Um, this may end up being interesting for me because I noticed that I just now noticed that I accidentally cut off a little more of the triangle point than I intended to. So we're going to, so, oh, and the thread just broke. Wow. <laughs> that has never happened on this machine. It happens sometimes. Okay. All right. Well, let's rethread. Ouch. As I jab the scissors into my finger. Don't do that. I'll try not to. Oh, Catherine says, I love watching the chemistry between you two. It's it's pretty good. I gotta say, I enjoy spending time with Becca on her lives, and I enjoy it when she comes on to my lives as well. We th I think we feel we have a good chemistry working together and know how to bounce off of each other uh, and throw things to each other when we need to. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, absolutely. All of that. <laughs> <laughs> Ian has a ringtone or a text tone on his phone, which is from, God, what was the movie? Big Hero 6. Yeah, big, I yeah. love that you just know exactly I, where I, I was going. I know exactly where you're going with that. <laughs> and I haven't seen that movie in a long time. Definitely love it. But since I've heard that, all that's been running through my head ever since you got here is blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yep. yep, one of my best friends there, that's their text tone because he loves that movie so much. And uh, he's a huge Disney fan like I am. And so every time he texts me, it does the um, Baymax blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Yeah, it's so funny. I knew exactly where you were going with that story. Uh, Marie says she is working on blocks for Donna's granddaughter, Harper, planning to start your quilt in 2024. Very nice. That's exciting. I can't wait to see what you make. Uh, Andrea says you had that. You had one that had a point cut off and you said you would fudge it in when you got to it. Yep, sure did. Right there. I just did that. So I just fudged it in and I'll have to be <clears throat> careful whenever I'm uh, sewing these, these rows together, I'll have to be careful and kind of work it in. It's going, this quilt is going to be wonky. It is just going to be wonky. And I accept that pretty much like any other quilt I make, to be <laughs> honest, but I accept that and I am totally okay with it. I did see somebody pop in. Where did your comment go? Uh, you said you've been MIA for a bit. Here we go. Uh, Nana Mona says, Ian, what pattern, uh, what is the pattern called? I've been MIA. -A -M I A for a while. Just love this 100% miss a lot of your videos. No worries. It is the Cozy Posy Triangle Quilt. The pattern is down in the description of this uh, live. You can head down there and grab the uh, website. You can head over to the website and uh, check out the pattern and get started on it for 2024. And it's a free one, by the way. It's a, it's a blog. It comes from a blog. So um, it is not a official like step-by-step -step pattern, but it still will step you through everything that you need to do and will get you on your way to creating this. Whoops. Uh, da -da. The quilting in the man cave says I was good and did not buy any fabrics from any sales. I reserved enough coin for my first Cotton Cuts Tree of Life Puzzle Mystery Quilt. That is so awesome. Excellent. Don't forget that does start on December 1st. You can choose what colorway you want. And here shortly, both Becca and I will have affiliate codes that you can use, or excuse me, affiliate links that you can use to sign up for the Puzzle Mystery Quilt. And remember, affiliate um, links uh, give us a small commission at no cost to you. So if you are interested in doing the Cotton Cuts Puzzle Mystery Quilt, um, you can sign up using one of our links and we will get a small commission. And I just rubbed oil onto my finger. I'm gonna use this piece of scrap and rub it off. There we go. Joydi is asking, do you ever sell your finished quilts? I have not ever sold one. I've given three quilts away uh, in the total history that I've been working on quilts, which is about five, six years. I've given three quilts away. Stingy. I, I, not selfish i rather i prefer selfish um <laughs> i have not given i have not uh sold any however um i am looking at i have a couple of quilts that i am looking at selling 
in the future, probably in 2024, I have a couple that I would like to sell and recoup a little bit of the cost of the, you know, long arming and materials and stuff like that. So I will probably be selling a few in 2024 as soon as I can figure out where to sell them at. <laughs> Um, she asked for both of us to answer that. So I'll tell you, no, I have never sold a quilt. I've never sold a finished quilt. I have done a couple of commission quilts. I don't do those regularly. It has to be a very special person in a very special scenario. And in that, um, they, like it, it's far and few between. I think yeah. I've done like three and that's it. Yeah. Uh, but no, I have not sold any, but I give most of my quilts away. Yeah, she does. She does. You gave one away on Thanksgiving. Yep. And I'm giving one away today. Yep. Um, I had a maintenance guy once. He came in to my apartment to uh, work on something. Um, and he saw the, a quilt that I had made hanging up. And he was like, oh, you sew? You, you make quilts? And I was like, yep, I sure do. And he's like, oh, well, you make one for my wife. And I was like, I appreciate it. Is, it's very kind of you to ask, but I don't take commission work. I, I don't like commission work. I don't want to turn this into a job. Mm -hmm. So I was like, thank you very much. But no, I don't take commission work. So um, he was a little, little disappointed, but uh, I don't want to turn this into a job. So I, I'm just <clears> going to do what I do. My struggle with commission pieces or yeah, commission work. Mm -hmm. My struggle with commission work is I want to use this as a creative outlet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the second it becomes a business yep. where I have to meet somebody's expectations. Yep. I stress myself out. Absolutely. I, I don't know the person. Right. Right. And so I don't know what they're going to expect from the whole process. Absolutely. I worry that I'm going to make the wrong fabric choice, the wrong stitch choice, the wrong thread choice, the yep. wrong everything choice. And I know that there are a lot of people out there that will literally say, I'm just going to be happy with whatever you do. And I appreciate you. But even if you're one of those, I'm still going to stress that I did it wrong. Right. right. I'm still going to stress that I did it wrong. So my, my, my thing is, is in order for me to do a quilt for you, to do a commission quilt for you, you have to be very special yeah, to me, near absolutely. and dear. What I do try to do is I just make the quilts that I want to make yep. because then it takes all of the stress about whether I'm going to make the right thread choice, mm -hmm. the right pattern choice, the right fabric choice off of my shoulders. And then I like to have quilts finished or close to finished on hand. Yes. So when somebody says, I want a quilt, will you give me one? Yeah. Or will you make one? I'll say, no, but I have these available. Have these would you available. like one of yeah. them? Right. Would you, would you like one of them? You yep. can have them. So I have two quilts right now mm -hmm. that have no home. Yep. They both need binding. So I will bind them at some point. Yep. Um, but they they have no home. So these quilts, like the ones that have no home, I pre-wash every quilt that I give away. Yep. Unless it's a show quilt. Mm -hmm. So I'll put binding on them. I will wash them and then I will fold them up and put them on my shelf. And then when somebody says, I want a quilt or I need a quilt, I'll give one. Yep. And I actually had three, like you said, Ian, but on Thanksgiving, yep. I gave one away to my sister-in-law who has a friend that wanted a quilt. Yes. <sighs> yep, yep, yep. Lori um, says I have given all of my quilts away except for the one that I cut my finger on. Oh no! And bled on. I'm oh. not giving my DNA away. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Bl talk about uh, blood, sweat, and tears, right? Mm -hmm. Like that is definitely. I saw another comment. Um, somebody said, "Oh, I lost." Oh, uh, here we go. So uh, sewing with Wayne says my ringtone was a dog barking, and it went off on the bus one day, and I just ignored it because I forgot it was mine. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, and then Carissa says, uh, I had the song, you're a jerk for my ex-husband's ringtone. Oh, good grief. <laughs> um, somebody else was talking about the puzzle mystery quilt. Oh, here we go. Uh, Tink says, hi, Ian, playing catch up with my carnival clues four and five, enjoying your life and working up the nerve to start a legit kids iris. Goop. Mm. You have got it. You are going to do amazing with it. And I can't wait to see your finished product for it. Legit kits. The blog of the month is a way, definitely the way to go if you are uh, new to FPP. 
the blog of the month is a great way to do it because it does break it down into those more manageable pieces, more manageable pieces, if I could talk correctly today. Um, and it makes it a lot less intimidating to do it that way, in my opinion. So mm -hmm. Uh, good on you for doing that. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be doing Iris. Um, it's a cool pattern, but I, I've got so many other projects that I need to work on. In fact, one is sitting in a box that I brought up with me to specifically work on while I was here. And I've been <laughs> working on so many other things that I just haven't had the time to work on it. So it is going back in the box, back to my house. I'm shipping it back to my house. So, oh, well. Cindy says, if it becomes stressful, I wouldn't do it either. Absolutely. That is exactly why I don't take commission work. I like what I like to make, and I don't like to have somebody else being my boss. You get what you get, and you mm -hmm. don't pitch a fit. Absolutely. Uh, Carissa says, I have 27 quilt tops laying around. <laughs> you got a lot of UFOs hanging out there. But I, I have several at home, um, although... My quilter has several of them right now. She's slowly working through the pile that I gave her. She's working through Christmas, Christmas quilts right now, or I shouldn't say Christmas quilts, but Christmas present quilts. Um, she has a whole bunch that she's working on, trying to get those orders out before uh, Christmas. But she said she was gonna throw mine back into the queue once she got through those. And I'll have to go see her soon after I get back home because I have to pick up my ribbon and my quilt from her, which I'm super excited about. Tammy said watching these videos does give me motivation. Good, excellent. I'm so glad to hear that. That is, YouTubers love hearing that because we, you know, a lot of times our words just go out into the ether and we don't know, uh, you know, we don't really know what happens once it leaves our little setup but it's great to hear that we can inspire you and i'm so glad to hear that spending the time with y'all sewing is uh, a uh, motivation for you i'm trying to think and sew at the same time and that is not a good combination <laughs> nana mona said hi becca i forgot to say hello 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 Let's see. Somebody said they had 27 quilt tops laying around. Yeah, that was uh, Carissa. Jeez. I know, right? Lot. Crazy. Yeah. They're Hello, finished Jerry. quilt tops, but the pain of trying to quilt them on my Juki, so I just keep making them. I understand. That's why I throw all mine at my quilter. I'm like, D do it. Do it. Fix it. Do it. Do, it do now. the things. Do the <laughs> things. Make it work. I've struck that up with Beth, though I need to scale back a little bit because I need to save money for right. uh, Christmas. Yeah. But I've been keeping her in business. You, Let me you just have been say. sending quite a I few I feel quilts. like every month I'm like, here, Beth, here's a couple more quilts. Here, do the things. Make it work. <laughs> make, uh, please make it go together now. So. Brenda says, I have finished the Yellow Rose of Texas, which I'm taking to the Krabby Quilter to be quilted next week. It has 100, or excuse me, 1,147 two and a half inch squares in it, and it cannot wait for it to be mm. quilted. You're going to send that to me afterwards, right? Because, you know, it's the Yellow Rose of Texas, and I live in Texas, right, Brenda? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Lori says, I am fighting quilt bankruptcy yep. and mailed a Judy Niemeyer quilt kit to Ooh. a friend because I will never get it started. Good for you. I'm proud of you for doing that. I'm proud of you for calling quilt, bro quilt, quilt bankruptcy. bankruptcy. I'm trying to say that. And you, your bankruptcy did not, it wasn't like it just went, like it wasn't for nothing. You yeah. gifted that to a friend. Yeah. That's super awesome. So congratulations. I know that can be a scary thing. Becca mm -hmm. has a wonderful, you have a video on. I do, but it's grossing. buried in the middle of another video where I talk about it. And yeah. so towards the end of this year, I'm going to revive that topic and do a dedicated video on just that. You absolutely should. With some other organization tips and tricks that I have to help you get 2024 off to a great start. Yeah, that's a, that's a great <clears throat> great thing quilt bankruptcy is a thing it is an important thing um and it's it's a good thing to do sometimes so i'm very proud of you it can be hard it can be really hard because your pride gets in the way mm -hmm. and you're like no i i bought this with my own money and i need to i need to do this but <laughs> you know sometimes it's just too overwhelming and it can be really hard to let it go be mm. like elsa and let it go um <laughs> 
But no, I'm super proud of you for that. So congratulations. S. Taylor is saying, Becca, I thought you had a long arm. Yes, I do have a long arm. She does. In fact, I'm probably, after I finish assembling the Cozy Posy Triangle quilt today, since I made some, uh, a wonderful friend here on YouTube sent me literally a box of Halloween scrap fabric that they weren't going to use. They declared quilt bankruptcy on the Halloween fabric. Sent it to me. I turned it into nine and a half inch squares, cut it up, made nine and a half inch in squares. And then I sewed those together into two just regular square patch quilts and it looks really good. I'm gonna throw one of those on the long arm probably this evening and start quilting away on it and get it done so that way I can send it back home and uh, have a lot of fun with it. Uh, happy birthday, Creative Cats. Hey, Creative Cats, happy birthday. I'm gonna go back to the question or comment yeah. from S. Taylor because I, I did touch on this on my channel, but I, I think it's worth mentioning here. So one of the questions that I get frequently is, Becca, why are you sending Beth your quilts if you have a long armor? And the simple short answer is because I don't have Pro Stitcher on my machine. Mm -hmm. That is a future investment that I will make, but it is not going to happen for a couple of years. Yeah. So in the meantime, if we go right back to the question, why do you have a long arm? Well, okay, yes, I don't have a pro stitcher and that is the big reason, but it's, I look at it like this. I could quilt the quilt myself. Mm -hmm. However, even if I just do a very simple loop-de-loop -loop design on the quilt edge to edge, it's gonna take me an hour or two to load the quilt do the stitching, take it off the long arm, square it up, do all the things that a long armor will do. And that two hours of my time, I'm also competing for creating videos, finishing other quilt tops, spending time with my family, writing patterns, doing other things that I like to do as well. And mm -hmm. so I have to make a choice. What do I want to do? Do I want to make the video? Do I want to spend time with my family? Do I want to write a pattern or do I want to quilt the quilt? So I feel like hiring a long armor does two things. The first one is it invests in a small woman led business because it's mm -hmm. Beth, right? Yep. It, gets, it helps her get her name out there because you can see what she's capable of doing. I can share with you what she's doing and it invests in her business. But then also number two, it frees me up to do the things that I want to do as well. So I, I think it's, it's twofold. She mm -hmm. benefits and I benefit and the quilt gets finished. Now that doesn't mean that every quilt that comes off of my machine goes to Beth. Yeah. I have a stack of quilts that I want to quilt, mm -hmm. but the quilts that I keep, I want to do custom quilting on. I don't want to do just edge to edge. Jesus. <laughs> Somebody subscribed. Somebody subscribed. <laughs> uh, Dr. Kathy Smith, thank you so much for subscribing. Sorry, that scared the heck out of me because the volume <laughs> is way up on this computer. I'm going to turn that down just a hair. Yeah. Scared the heck out of me when that happened. You're welcome, everyone. But thank you again for subscribing. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no worries. So for me, it's, it's a way to invest back in the community that mm -hmm. I like to be a part of. It helps Beth grow her business. She does give like I, I get like do get five, get 25% off stuff. And she does an awesome job. So if the quilt, when I finish a quilt top, I think about, is this one that I just want quilted and bound? And if the answer to that is yes, then my next question is, do I want to do that edge to edge or do I just want to get it done? Yep. And if the answer is, I just want to get it done, then I'll mail it off to a long armor. But if the answer to either of those is no, yep then it goes on my rack for me to do. Absolutely. The problem is, if I'm being honest, Ian, look at my rack. Oh, I... <laughs> do you realize what you just <laughs> I did. I meant my quilt ladder. <laughs> <laughs> it's even funnier because I'm not even wearing a bra. I... <laughs> <laughs> I did not pick up on that until you started laughing. You're welcome. 
<laughs> Christina B, thank you so much for. I'm red now. I'm looking at myself in the camera. You I am are, red. You are. You are. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Cause they haven't even seen it yet. That's Not the yet. hard it's part. Coming. It's like, coming. They haven't even it's seen coming. it yet. It's coming. So they don't even know the hilarity that just so happened. To but... finish the statement. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> Carry on my ladder, Ian. <laughs> is um. A ton of quilts that I have decided I want to quilt. And so every so often I have to pull quilt bankruptcy yep. on that too, right? Yep. Because I've got to I've got to look at them and be realistic. Am I really going to do those? Am I really going to quilt them? And yep. the answer is probably going to be no for some of them. Yep. It is really hot in here at the moment. Uh, no. Oh, good. It did finally make it out <laughs> it's to everybody. It's getting hot in It's here. getting hot in here. Yep. Uh-huh. So we're going to keep our clothes completely on. And, uh... I, I already am in the other direction. I want to go on. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right. <laughs> All right. All right. So that's 10, nine and a half, eight and a half. <laughs> Moving on. This is going to be eight. <laughs> um, I lost somebody's comment a little bit ago. She was asked, oh, okay, here it is. Uh, Scopy58. Uh, Scoopy? Yeah, Scoopy58. Excuse me. Uh, ha so I, I hope that answered your question uh, <laughs> because you had asked a very similar question about, you know, you have a long arm, but. Why don't you use it or whatever? It's. It, it, I know it is a completely seeking information because you are interested. In, I know I am blushing real hard, Trek. Um, <laughs> uh, you are seeking information. No, no harm, no foul there at all. Yep. We totally understand why you were asking. And I, you know, I, I've thought about long arms, and you know, since I have basically gone and dove feet first into this you know i i don't think i'm going to be losing this hobby anytime soon right um i thought about you know well maybe i should get a long arm first of all i have no room in my small apartment to do it mm -hmm. second of all i enjoy being able to put the quilt top together and then sending it off to my quilter i'm some I, like becca said i'm supporting a small business i am supporting a woman-owned business mm -hmm. i am supporting my friend and she does some really impeccable work way better work than what i could do so i enjoy sending my quilts to her and having her work on them and create with them because a lot of times i tell her you know do whatever you want like go crazy with it and a lot of times long armors don't get the chance to go crazy and do what they want to do a lot of times they're working off of what the customer wants them to do so um, when I send my quilt to her quilt, I just most 90% of the time I tell her, do whatever you want on it and have fun because I know she's going to do awesome work and she loves that. So I am still way hot in here. <laughs> Woo. All right. Um, Jojo says there are many chapters in our lives and your long arming journey will be another chapter. That's Family great. always quilting and your career are current absolutely that is another great way to put it because who's to say in another year or two she may be going off and as she creates her quilt and then boom she immediately puts it on the long arm and starts running with it so yeah. uh it's it's all it's all about the journey right so we've got a question about the cost of a long arm yeah. in the chat right um can you tell me about the cost of a long arm so here's the thing i don't sell long arms so keep all of that in mind yeah but i know a lot of times people won't publish the price when you ask them so i'm gonna sit down while we have this little conversation oh, oh wow you got 259 people watching you oh Ian. that's awesome yeah thank you guys for joining me so cost of a long arm this is what my experience was i bought my long arm in 2019 or 2020 i think it was 2020 right before i think it was right before maybe the pandemic hit but i have to go back and look i did purchase it from so yeah um and i actually had no problems buying it from a handy quilter dealer that is geographically thousands of miles away from me no problem i would recommend if you are looking or considering buying one from them i would recommend them the only thing I would tell you is if you're going to buy a handy quilter machine from them, make sure you have a handy quilter dealer near you that can service the machine because you don't want to mail it back to them to do all that. So yeah. if you're going to buy it from them, just make sure that you have somebody that can service it near you. And not everybody will service handy quilters. So I do have a machine guy who services all of my sewing machines 
even though the baby lock version of this machine is essentially the same as the handy quilter, he will not service my handy quilter. So just kind of keep that in mind. Yeah. As far as cost of the machine is concerned, my setup, I bought the electric channel locks. Mm -hmm. I bought the light bar, so I have nice light over the long arm, and I got the 10-foot frame and a 20-inch Amara. And for all of those things, with and I got a ruler base tossed in a couple extra feet and a couple of rulers, I believe my cost for all of that was right around fourteen or fifteen thousand dollars. I financed it with zero percent interest, and I am still paying it off. And the and if I'm being honest and putting all my dirty laundry out there, the reason why I am not going to step into Pro Stitcher is because I will not finance another big purchase yeah. for my long arm until the long arm itself is paid off. Absolutely. So once that's paid off, I will consider either taking some time and saving up and paying cash for Pro Stitcher or putting it on the Bernina credit card that I have and then paying that off. But I don't want to pay for both at the same time. So that's why I'm waiting. Yep. I, my recommendation, if you're looking into getting a long arm, is consider how you're going to use it. If you really love the idea of free motion quilting everything and you just don't want to baste your quilt and you want to get it up onto a frame, then you don't need the pro stitcher. But if you're looking to get more quilts finished quicker with less work from you, get the automation and do it right away. Yeah. <laughs> um, jumping in here, um, always L8LP, mm -hmm. forgive me for not probably saying that name correctly, asked when I first tuned tuned in you were referring to your quilt shop which yeah. one was that that is the quilter studio yeah uh, for becca it is the uh, quilter studio in, in fairfax, fairfax virginia, virginia. Yep. Uh, for me i usually end up at uh sew it up bernina but that is in dallas fort worth so that's not exactly here although when i'm here the quilter studio is my quilting studio as well mm -hmm. and black uh handy quilter does have a black friday sale right now so if you're if you're looking for that, that's great. Uh, Jody is asking, what does the Pro Stitcher do? And actually, Ian's friend has Pro Stitcher. So you want to talk about that? Well, she doesn't have Pro Stitcher. She well, it's has the same Bernina. thing. Yeah, it's the it's same, the same thing. thing. Um, basically, it automates the um, long arm. So it's basically connected to a computer. You can drop in your patterns into the computer. You can literally plot out the points of the quilt that resize you want to quilted, them. resize them whole bunch of manipulation tools that you can use with it. And then you push the go button and it will automatically control the long arm and draw, or not draw, but it'll sew what you have created the path to be. And that way you don't, you can get it started and you can listen for it. I, mm -hmm. It's funny because I can actually sit there and listen yep. to her machine yep. and I know when something's gone wrong. I can hear something, you know, the thread broke or things like that. I can actually hear that stuff happen. And so as long as you're kind of keeping an ear out for it, you can do other things while it's running uh, in the background. Uh, I did jump in. Or I want to jump in here and say uh, hi to Adam Sows. He is in the chat right now. He Hello. says, hi, Becca and Ian. I blame you, Ian. I bought a featherweight. <gasps> you are an enabler. Yay. You're welcome. <laughs> in fact, we act Mary has Peggy Sue. Yep in her car right now. Oh yeah. So we'll have the featherweight back in the shop. And you know, Ian, I, I keep forgetting to tell you, so since since Adam brought that up, yeah. I was going to challenge go. you to do something on the hand crank while you were here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Goodness gracious, talk might, about maybe going not. back. We'll see. <laughs> you might Woo. do a four patch. Yeah, right. <laughs> make, a, make a single four patch on it. Okay. Maybe, maybe, that'll be, maybe that'll be a quilt we make. Like everybody that comes has to make a four patch oh, of scraps on the hand crank. Yeah. Every time somebody visits. So if you visit every Sunday, Mary, then right. you're going to be making lots of four patches. <laughs> There you go. We'll just make a whole quilt out of visitors who yeah. have come and everybody can... has to make a block. Yep. I'll That'd make a I'll make one out of Tula. <laughs> That's fine. Uh let's see. Um I think I answered all the questions with the long arm. Yeah. This is going to be such a wonky quilt. I'm looking at my seams going, wow, this is, I'm really just kind of, meh, whatever. It's close <laughs> enough. It's fine. It's fine. 
I, uh, Dr. Kathy Smith, your new subscriber. Hello. Says, hello, all. Thanks for the cheers. I just bought a Bernina Q20 sit down because lazy <laughs> for a retirement gift to myself. Free motion quilting is my favorite part of the process. Congratulations. That's so exciting. I love that you bought a new machine. We love when people buy new machines because it is so much fun. I didn't really have, I bought my machine right when COVID happened. So I got my machine right at the start of COVID. And I didn't really have like any, I couldn't go to classes. I couldn't really do a lot. And so I had to get my community through online yeah. in order to to really celebrate and i didn't really have a celebration when i got my machine so uh let's celebrate with you now yay! absolutely yay so we that's need so to, awesome we need to go up to a question that scoopy 58 asked yeah. i think we kind of overlooked in the whole process sorry about that no no worries that's what i'm here for how well, can you find the missing comments there you go so can you tell me about the cost of sending a quilt off to long arm thank you absolutely so um, I have a deal. I will be completely transparent with everybody. I do have a kind of a deal set up with my quilter. I send her a lot of quilts and so she, she works them in as she can and she gives me a, a small discount. Um, I, I don't, don't tell anyone. Shh, it's fine. Uh, but, um, it can be, it can be expensive to get your quilts sent off, but it, it's really thinking about time and resources, right? It's all about thinking about, do I want to spend that time quilting it myself? Or do I want that time to, as Becca had it, you know, spend time with the family or spend time with friends or anything like that. Um, it can be, a, it just really depends on what your quilter is charging. Per, usually it's per stitch or per inch. Um, but I feel like for the most part, most quilters are pretty fair unless there is a crazy amount of custom uh, work that they're doing. And usually custom work is where they're going in and they are driving the the long arm themselves. Uh, or changing thread or colors. Or changing thread colors, which uh, my quilter for my Vortex quilt, she literally wrote on the invoice, she was like, a million thread color changes. Right. Totally fair. I, t they're all, she went through and she customed every bit of those colors in there. So I will pay her everything she asks mm -hmm. for changing the thread that many times during the long arming process. I have found most long armors, if you're sending it to somebody that is just going to do computerized edge to edge, which is what we were talking about with the automation, yep. they're gonna pick what they call a pantograph and they're going to size it to quilt all over your quilt, edge to edge, not doing anything special, just getting it quilted for yep. you. Most quilters that I have found charge around two cents per square inch of the quilt. And I think that's what Beth charges. So to figure out the cost of your quilt, you're going to take the perimeter, take the length, multiply it by the width, because that gives you the square mm -hmm. of the square area of the quilt. Mm -hmm. And then you'll multiply all of that by 0 0.02. And that's about how much you're going to spend. And then they will charge you for batting. And sometimes there might be like a thread fee or a service fee for like thread needles, whatever. Yeah. But um, some places will throw in the batting for free. Mm -hmm. Some places carry backing that you can choose from. It just depends on the long armor that you have. Yep. Absolutely. And I just realized that I sewed, even though I was looking straight at the picture, I still sewed it wrong, but mm -hmm. that's okay. It's not wrong per se. No one's going to notice. You have a question, Ian. What's the question? Do you find it awkward to sew on Becca's Juki? The reason I ask is when I took a class, they had a faff. I use a Bernina. It was awkward for a bit when I'm used to my own machine. Oh, absolutely. Like when I first got here, um, I'm used to my Bernina. And so I, the muscle memory for me of going up to cut my threads, there's a button on my Bernina that I can literally go up and push on the throat of the machine. Hers does not have that here. It is off to the side. So there were multiple times that my muscle memory went up to push that thread cut button and I would realize, right, I'm on the Juki. Got to go over there. So it, it's awkward in the sense that I'm just not used to it. And there are a lot of times I'm finding myself accidentally 
uh, trying to muscle memory things. And it happens on my featherweight as well. There, I can't tell you, I even mentioned it in one of my lives where I'm sitting there and I, my thumb goes up to hit that thread cut button. And I'm like, oh, the featherweight will certainly not have an automatic thread cutter on it. So oh, let me, let me just uh, blow your mind. Don't hit the button when you get to the end of the seam. Oh, you can rock the pedal. Yeah, rock the pedal. Yeah. I, it's weird because how my foot sits. You got to find the right position I for have your to, foot. Yeah, and yeah, I can't I really do it all There's that well. a hack. I saw a hack. What's the hack? Oh gosh, I got to find, I wish I could find it again. But there's a, there's either, I think it's a new pedal actually that I saw at Juki Junkies. Uh -huh. And I think they marketed it for the TL18, but I wonder if it would work with the TL2010, I what know. I have. The thread cutter is uh -huh. on the right. Oh, it's a separate pedal. Interesting. So like okay. your, if you're thinking about like how you drive, right. the gas pedal right. is your thread cutter yes. and the brake pedal is your driving. Oh, or I would, maybe I would be around. okay with that. Oh, I don't I even use that. the thread cutter on my Bernina because or the pedal thread cutter, because a lot of times uh, I would accidentally hit it by mm -hmm. mistake. I would click my heel down by mistake. And right in the middle, and right in the middle of attaching binding is when I would cut the thread, and I started yelling. So I turned the thread cutting off, and oh, there's somebody coming down the. Oh, it's Amazon. Oh, it's a big oh, Amazon. Oh, it's my um, it's, it's your, my dog. Yeah, yeah, it's a big Amazon truck. I, wow. Hope he doesn't um, get stuck in my yard again. We're gonna say. I hope they don't hit my rental car. They won't. <laughs> um, no. But anyways, uh, yeah. So I find myself sometimes accidentally hitting my pedal uh, on my Bernina. And so I turn the thread cutting off. I'll have it do the knot. I'll have it knot the thread, but it won't cut the thread. So, uh, yeah. It is a little awkward, but I've gotten used to it since I've been here for a while. And it it's just is different now. It's nothing, nothing major. Just different. Uh, Katie says, ooh, if that pedal is a thing, I need it in my life. Use my affiliate yeah. link. Thank you. It's on my website. Head over to SoBecca.com and you can grab that affiliate link from her website. Mm -hmm. uh, Lori Clark says, I had Laura Lynn from Mom and Pop Quilt Shop quilt my Warmth of Our Stars project. We talked about what I wanted and I love every stitch. Yeah. It is on one of her videos. That's awesome. Teresa is asking you, Ian, what is on your iPad? Because it is not going to sleep. <laughs> so uh, it is, I have it set to 15 minutes. Um, so I just, every now and again, you'll see me tap the screen because I uh, have left it awake for a while. So um, yeah, it's, it's the, um, it's the picture of the quilt just to make sure that I'm referencing it and uh, got it correct when I'm putting it together. Cause I laid it out. I have a certain way that I want everything and um, there's actually settings on your iPads and other uh, mobile devices where you can uh, have it not turn off immediately and it will go to sleep after 15 minutes. When I worked in the science museum, we used iPads all the time in the galleries and so we would set the timer on them way out so that way as we had, our, had them up on display, they wouldn't just automatically go to sleep. Katie says, I almost sprained my finger trying to get the non-existent thread cutter to work on my travel machine. Yep. <laughs> I definitely have reached up to hit it on the, on the um, featherweight and have been like, right, don't, like, I literally touch the top of my sh machine. Usually about the time I would hit the button, I realize it's not there. And so I've slowed my finger down enough that I don't, like, hurt it, but... Speaking of hurting, uh, several people have asked over the course of a couple of days how I'm feeling, my, how my tailbone is feeling. It is getting there. It is getting better every day. Uh, I am still sitting on the donut, but uh, it is getting better every day. It just, just takes a while to heal, unfortunately. Uh, da, 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 looking to see what else we have in here. Oh, Mary says, my long armor fixes all of my sins or mistakes. I just love her. Yes. A lot of times the quilting can really fix mistakes. And uh, it's really funny because like I'll point my mistakes out to my quilter. She's like, oh, so you wanted me to fix that for you, huh? <laughs> She's joking. But it's pretty funny because a lot of times people... Uh, long armors are like, oh, everybody just expects us to fix your mistakes for you. It's, if, they're joking, of course. But um, you can hide a lot of things in the quilting. So, you know, I, I'm going to jump in here, too. Thank you, Alice, for subscribing. I appreciate Yay, that. Yay, Alice. 
this. I'm going to jump in here, yeah. though, really quick, and I'm going to say this on behalf of multiple long armors yep. that I have known over the years. One of the common things that I have heard multiple long armors complain about is quilters send them their quilt top and start apologizing profusely. Yes. Saying, it's not good enough, I'm so sorry. Or yep. they have heard people say, my quilt's not good enough for mm -hmm. a long armor to quilt. Mm -hmm. Don't be so hard on yourself. Yep. Yep. Just just don't. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have seen some of the quilts that my long armor has worked on. She showed me some of them. And no quilt top is ever perfect. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. And she has shown me how she can work her magic on them and really enhance even, you know, even though you think your quilt top is like the worst thing ever, I promise you it's not. And they can really enhance and work around and cover up some of those mistakes that we've made or the sins that we've made or whatever you want to call them. Uh, and they can really bring those quilts mm -hmm. to life. I she really did that with my charm not charm quilt because i had some mistakes my points weren't aligned up correctly there were a lot of things about that quilt that there are some pretty pretty noticeable mistakes in but she worked her magic on it and she made it spectacular so don't apologize don't freak out uh there are a lot of ways that they can make those problems disappear that is row D, by the way. We have finished row D. Wow. Uh, folks were, somebody was asking, oh, Joy D, what is the best travel machine? I'm thinking of buying one. Excellent question. What would you recommend? So, honestly, for me, I love my Bernina machines. I have a lot of fun with them, but it is a hassle. I have the 770, Tula Pink Edition. Uh, and it is a hassle to try and lug that thing around. It is big, it is heavy, and I love it, but I don't know if I was just going to sew for a single day, I don't know that I would want to bring that machine out and sew on that. I honestly, in my opinion, think that Featherweights and Singer 301s are pretty amazing to use because they're light, they're easy to move, they're uh, a great workhorse, and there's not a lot that you have to do with them. So I enjoy bringing my featherweight. So that's why when you see me house sitting, I'll usually bring the featherweight with me because it is so much easier for me to just grab that and go rather than have to pack up all of the Bernina and lug that with me. I love my Bernina. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely love it. It's just not a great travel machine. Uh, for me, my Juki is my machine, period. I don't have it. My mom has my... Uh, baby lock, yep. which is actually bigger than my Juki. Yes, it is. Uh, weighs less. Yes. Bigger than the Juki. Yes. I just do everything on the Juki. I just take the Juki. And, but I don't go places and sew except for a couple of retreats. I go to two retreats a year and I'll take the Juki with me. Everything else is done here. I don't have a second machine. Yep. I, I have the Juki. That's all I have. And you're also sewing for a week in that location. So it makes sense yeah, 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 yeah. to bring her Juki with her because yeah. that's a long time to be sewing. Probably oh, I would if not I was want... going for a week, mm -hmm. I would be sewing on my Bernina yep. as well. I would not want to sew on something other than the Juki. Like no. I just, I'm so accustomed to her. And listen, I'll just be honest with you. There is a second Juki, same model, set mm -hmm. up in my space right now. There it is, is Mary's Juki. Uh, she has been kind enough to let Ian use it while she's here so Thank that we're you, both sewing on the same, like we both have a machine set up all the time Yep. and he's been using it. And there's mm -hmm. been a couple of times where I've gone over and worked on that machine. Yep. And while that machine is great, it's still not my Juki there. I was just talking with Ian about yeah, this yesterday. We talked about it. Yeah. They're same machine, but they still sound just a little bit different, right? Like yep. mine has a different sound. It does. It does. Ooh, is he going to back up that entire driveway? I don't know. I'm wondering if he'll need me to help, like, move a car so he can turn around. Uh, oh, sorry, dude, everyone. We'll... He's about to go onto my lawn. And don't get stuck, dude. Don't get stuck. Sorry, there's some fun drama happening outside the window right now. So we're watching the Amazon. It's a big, like, what are those U-Haul trucks? And he's backing, he's decided he's to back up the up. driveway backwards he's so. probably cursing me too he's probably so is. that was a heavy package 
Well, from here, it's a straight shot, but I wouldn't want to back out onto that road. I, like, there's nothing. He's going. All right. Good for him. Good luck. Don't hit a tree, dude. Oh, my gosh. We were watching Eamon and Beck's vlog earlier oh, today. Them. And they had a U-Haul, and they were parking it in between two buildings. And, oh, my gosh, there was, like, inches on either side. If you don't watch Eamon and Beck, uh, they, they, are move, they are moving, and uh, they, they, yeah, there was a tight, tight squeeze between two buildings for sure. Is there a sewing machine that's, good to, that's a good one to fly to retreats with? That is a great question. I, I have know. never found one. <sighs> oh, he's got it. Yeah, he's got it. Dang. He must have a camera, like a backup camera. He must, because I could not I would, have done that. <laughs> Listen, I don't back down my own driveway. <laughs> There's, there was one time we got to the end of the driveway, mm -hmm. and somebody, whoever was with me was like, oh, I forgot such and such. It was Nicole a couple days yes, ago. Yes, yes. She was like, oh, I think I forgot my medication. I was like, well, I'm going to go turn around and right. go back. I'm not backing down that driveway. Yep. <laughs> um, I did hear a funny story about a travel sewing machine. So uh, Cotton Cuts on their uh, Village Green reveal talked about one of their workers was going to go, I think, to Florida or something. And so they were wanting to take a sewing machine with them. So they did all the research. They did all the things to find them a machine that they could take on the airplane with mm -hmm. them. And at one point they had a connecting flight. So they literally sat in the terminal sewing. They had a pressing station. They had everything. And uh, it's pretty, that's a pretty funny story to me. Um, featherweights are probably a good way to fly. Uh, but you can't, like, you would have to check all the rest of your things, basically. So the, obviously the featherweight would either go, it could fit underneath the seat in front of you or in the overhead bin. But I just get so nervous. There's no way I could fly with my Bernina because there's no way it would fit in the overhead bin. There's no way it would fit in, under the seat below. And I'm not going to check my Bernina. There's no way. Mm -hmm. So I, there's no way for me to fly with the Bernina. I would absolutely have to drive. If well, I and that's the other that thing, too. For both of my retreats, I do drive to them. Yeah, yeah, you do. I'm getting lost on which one is which. So give me a second to orient myself. That was that. This is this. This goes here. Okay. I found it. <sighs> Let's yep, see. All of that. I have had several Berninas, Mary says, and I travel with the little 220. Is that the one that you, did you just read that? I did not. Okay. Uh, C card says I have my mom's singer in a cabinet and I bought a baby lock jazz too. And I'm thinking of getting a third one for travel. Yeah. Yep. That's why I have my featherweight for travel and for just fun. So's it's not my daily driver. I talked about this on my channel a couple of back in Halloween, I think around October. Uh, I talk about the featherweight is not my daily driver, but I do enjoy using it for sure. Daily driver. That's a good term. Uh, so uh, Teresa wants to know, do you have the travel cart for your Juki, Becca? Travel cart. Oh, like the Tudo? Yeah, um, I think that's what she's talking about. Okay. Um, I do have a Tudo, but it is, I bought it for my baby lock and I don't have one for the Juki. I do intend to buy one for the Juki before my next retreat in January. Very nice. I'm sorry, June, not January. <laughs> And that's wishful thinking. You're right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here I am lost. Okay, there we go. Next one is this one. Yes. Kevin the quilter flies with his featherweight. That's awesome. K Kevin, how do you... Oh, he's you... not here. Oh. They were telling us about him. Oh, I was like, <laughs> hey, Kevin, us all tell us his all dirty about laundry. It. Tell me how you fly with it because I am super curious. Well, I know he's a flight attendant, so that might have something to do with it. Uh, Donna says, I know a lady who checked in her sewing machine on the plane and it was destroyed. <gasps> they did not And that's it why all. we don't yep, exactly. check them. Exactly. Exactly. They did not secure it at all, and it was moving around the plane, belly of the plane the whole time. And that is why I don't check uh, sewing machines. There's no Listen. way. Okay, I had, for years, I had wanted a big suitcase, because for a number of years when I traveled, I only had like a small carry-on size suitcase. Yep. And when I had Zoe, I wanted a bigger suitcase. So I went and bought the biggest suitcase you could get, like the, the, the biggest one at yeah. Target. Yeah, yeah. It was soft cover, brand new, got really excited because I could fit everything for Zoe and everything for me and everything for Jason in this one suitcase. Yep. Packed it up, had plenty of room to spare, 
took it for its first trip on a plane and the zipper was broken. Oh my gosh. Like literally like they don't take care of the luggage. What's the average weight of a featherweight? Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. 85,000 um, pounds. No. Karen says, I once flew with a sewing machine in 1991. The TSA agent at the time uh, managing the x-ray machine was just confused. <laughs> then a more seasoned agent slapped him on the back and said it was a sewing machine. I could definitely see the confusion. Like, I've, I've always wondered, I've had a couple of things that I've wondered, like, will the TSA, like look at it and be like, what the heck is this? <laughs> like, try to stop me and search me and all that kind of stuff. But uh, quick fact, if you are flying, you are allowed to take scissors Under on the plane. Inches. However, it must be four inches from the uh, point of pivot. So where they're, the, the uh, this thing is, wherever, mm -hmm. wherever the bolt thing is right there, to tip has to be no more than four inches. So I think I actually think these scissors could fly because this looks like I don't have. Let me see in. those. Those are five. No, th no, no, no. Those are those are eight inch. Eight inch. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, are you sure. Yeah. Or like... seven inch. They might be seven inch, but those are ruler. those would not be able to fly. But a pair like that would. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. A pair like these would be able to. These are actually five Those inch. Would. It would be just over. I feel like I feel like these would. I think those are five inch. That's what Kai has them classified as. Let's see. Oop, where is the thing over here? I'm gonna. I'm. I'm curious because. Um, but it could be that the way they're classified might be different than what TSA looks for. That's that is true. It is because and that's I don't know I'm how scissor I'm... manufacturers classify them as five inch, seven inch, whatever. Yeah, and that's why I'm like. I, bet you these could probably Measure fly them. let me see all right here we go so here is a ruler where are my markings there they are so yeah these can fly because Sweet. from pivot pivot point to tip this is just over two and uh one fourth inch so these now, could fly now here's what i'm going to tell you those are my Kai's. <laughs> I'm not going to chance no, it. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Because the last thing I would want to do is get to the gate, get through security, and they'd be like, yep. nope, nope, nope. Absolutely. Throwing yeah, them you away. Don't, you do not want to fly. And I actually, when I flew with my scissors, I actually printed out the TSA website. Uh -huh, I'm not going to fight with the TSA agent. Could, um, <laughs> that they could fly, that scissors under four inches could fly. Your um, larger ones can fly as well. Sweet. Um, these from middle of pivot point to tip are just under four inches. So in theory, these could fly as well. Still would not take them no. because I'm not going to get that one TSA agent that exactly. wants to fight with me. Exactly. Not going to do it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I bought a pair of just kind of okay scissors to take with me just on the off chance mm -hmm. that they wouldn't take them. That's good to know. <clears throat> Uh, if I had an expensive machine, maybe I would buy a second seat and buckle it in. That's a good idea, actually. Uh, yeah. That might actually work. <laughs> Fallon said, I just don't want to get patted down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all know who wants to get patted down here. Ian's like, no. I no. test me. Right. <laughs> test me. I They're did. four inches, I promise. I know, right. <laughs> I did get, uh, when I was leaving Redmond, um, Oregon, I did, they had to do uh, just a patent. It, even though I have TSA pre-check and all that kind of stuff, they uh, had to do a random search. And so they patted me down and I was like, all right, whatever. Don't care. Don't care. It was literally like two seconds. You just kind of went pat, 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 pat. Oh, okay, you're fine. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. <laughs> okay. Okay. All my red and green How's... are cut. I gotta Good. cut my low volumes now. And it's unthreaded again. Mary has shared with us per Google, average weight of a featherweight is 11 pounds. Oh, okay. When checking in, I would ask, so if not, you can put them in your checked bag before it gets checked. That's a great idea. Yeah. Like, did... <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> pull out like a pair of nine inch dress shirts. Right, yeah. Can I take these on the plane? 
<laughs> I was I was worried because I had <clears throat> I actually bought a second pair of the Tula Pink um, snips or not snips. They're they're shorter than four <laughs> inches, but I um, I bought a second pair just in case. Like if if somebody gave me flack about it, um, I could you know I could have a second pair and not give my good pair away. Karen says the TSA website has a disclaimer that says the final decision will rest with the local TSA it officer. Does. It does. And Fallon says, Ian, my husband would print that out and bring the paperwork and then argue with them. I, Me? No thanks. I won't chance it. <laughs> I definitely, like, I did that. I printed it out. I had it ready. I was ready in case the TSA agent was like, oh, these are too big. I was going to be like, oh, it's per the website, blah, blah, blah. They didn't even like, be, I guess partly because I have TSA pre-check, so I literally don't have to take anything out of my suitcase. I literally just sent the suitcase through. It was a non-issue. It was an absolute non-issue, so. Oh my gosh. I love to sew says, I have a pair of Kohana embroidery snips. I packed them in my suitcase when I flew home and I prayed the whole time that they made it home. Funny thing, the snips made it home, but my book did not. What? so weird what happens sometimes nana mona says becca i have a 1975 kenmore the old girl sews great i would like a second one i don't need bells and whistles what kind of machine do you advise if you're asking for a just like a second machine or a second vintage machine i'm not sure i'm clear on the question if you're asking for just recommendation for a second machine that doesn't have to have all the bells and whistles i'm going to tell you i love my juki it does take a little getting used to if you have a computerized machine it because does. that machine is completely mechanical, but yep. it does one thing really, really fast, well. really well, and that's all I need it to do. I think if I, if I was in the market to search for a new machine, let's say that, let's take the current Bernina out of the equation. If I was looking for a machine, Juki would this Juki would be on the list of possibilities. I would absolutely be okay having this machine. I would have to learn how to use it and like, there would be some nuances that I would need to get used to. But if I was a brand new sewing person, new to the scene, this would be on the list of possibilities. Second machine, yeah, I would, I love my Juki. I 100% I love my Juki. The only drawback, because everything else I can deal with, the only thing about the Juki that I wished it did, it would just be really nice if it could do a zigzag. Mm -hmm. You, I see all these machines that have hundreds of beautiful stitches. You know how many I use on my baby, how many I used on the baby lock? Two. Yep. The straight stitch and the zigzag. That's yeah. it. That's all I ever did. But I also really kind of appreciate that it doesn't do a zigzag because that means the needle is always in the exact same position. There's never any deviance because it can't move left or right. So um, I like that. I like that. I yep. would recommend the Juki. Yep. Uh, last time I flew. And if you do decide to buy one, I have an affiliate link with Juki Junkies. I would love your support there. And they, by the way, if you do happen to buy a Juki or need accessories for a Juki or need education on a Juki or whatever the case is, Juki Junkies is the place to go. They have helped me out with my machine on a number of occasions without even knowing who I was. So I, I highly recommend. Oh, look at Melissa's comment of off topic, but I yeah. wanted to let you know that your binding video is amazing. I watched mm. it sitting at Dulles waiting for my flight home. It is a very good video, Melissa. If you don't know what she's talking about, Becca put out a wonderful binding tutorial video that you should definitely go check out. <laughs> if you want to do machine binding and have never had the chance to or want to learn how to, uh, she has a really good video out for two different methods of machine binding and I hope to make a supplemental video to that uh, in the near future once I'm back home. Yeah, and to be fair, like what I walk you through you got another subscriber. I did. Joyce Jordan, thank you for subscribing. I feel like with my, with that binding video, I really just kind of showed you my method and then talked about Ian's. Ian's video will show you his method. So yep. just stay tuned. From start to end. Lots of people saying Jukies are awesome. Yep. 
they are. They are. I definitely, like I said, it would be a second, second choice for me for sure. Yep. Adam says, Jukies are awesome. I'm on my third and it's the industrial that I'm taking with me to the grave. <laughs> <laughs> Pam says a few years ago, a uh, couple, I, a few years ago, flew to a couple China on the way coming home. At the Chinese airport, they took... Okay, so yeah. Pam, a few years ago, was flying. Yeah. And the Chinese airport took away her little bird scissors and said, you can't fly into the United States with any scissors. Yeah, yeah. The rules have changed over the years. And also um, other countries, like... Other countries are definitely... There's a, there's a barrier sometimes in translation and or understanding of the rules so it makes sense that they took those i would not argue that if i was over in another country i would not argue that country's <laughs> rules <laughs> and what they say is allowed and isn't allowed be like okay all right that's cool that's fine so, so that's why i would not take my best scissors or anything like that absolutely there are a couple of folks are asking is my juki straight stitch only mm -hmm. yes it is. it is i also had somebody ask uh, gosh, where is it? Christina B., what Juki do you have? I'm a no frills girl, too. Currently have a baby lock joy. It does what I want, but the throat is relatively small, and I'd like a few more stitches. Yes, only a few. So my Juki is the 2010, T the TL 2010Q. It only has one stitch. Straight. That's yep. it. So if you're looking for a machine that has multiple stitches, that is not the machine for you. Not the machine. But they do have other machines that do have multiple stitches. Mm -hmm. The Juki's throat space from the point of the needle to the where the all the mechanicals are where over by where you put the thread, it's not as wide as my Baby Lock Aria, but it is higher and the nose or the part that holds the needle, I'm sorry, it looks sleek to me. Mm -hmm. It looks like a hot rod. It does. It does. <laughs> If you are interested in anything Juki related, I've dropped my affiliate link in the chat again. Laura says, I have an engraved Leatherman tool. The scissors had a blade that measured only an inch. The tool was only two inches. I traveled with it many times with no issues. And then it was confis confiscated, confiscated in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. That's so heartbreaking. It is. It is. It's really annoying that sometimes they just don't know or they're not familiar with their own rules or somebody's having a bad day or all kinds of things. It's really annoying that sometimes it, it cannot, you know, one person doesn't know or is misinformed or whatever. Um, and that's why, that's why I printed off the rules and was like, it's in there. But I did end up mailing them. So I went from, so I was at QuiltCon in Phoenix, 2022. I had them with me and I took them to, I was going to uh, Oregon, Bend, Oregon next. Um, and so I took them with me to Oregon, but I did mail them home instead of putting them back in my suitcase because I was trying to remove as much from my suitcase as possible that I didn't need anymore. And so I did end up mailing them home through USPS. Adam says his Juki is 5,500 stitches per minute Ooh. what you're sewing on right now is 15 okay his is 5500 stitches per minute well. which is insane Ooh. and the thread cutter is even faster than the tl which is mad That's you know crazy. what i will tell you the one thing that frustrates oh. me about my baby lock now that i'm used to the juki is actually the thread cutter yeah the thread cutter on the juki is almost instantaneous it's like half a second the baby lock is dirty, dirty, yep. dirty. Yep. like it's a good two or three seconds. And yep. I feel like I'm just waiting. <laughs> yep. Yep. When I have used it, I've definitely sat there and been like, come on, come now. on a little faster, please. Little faster. Debbie says the last time I flew with my sewing kit, I had no problems and it had a 60 millimeter rotary cutter in it. Wow. They either weren't paying attention or had no idea right. that the funny pizza cutter was so sharp. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, That's probably what it was. They probably didn't know what they were looking at. I now I'm kind of in love with Jackie's machine. She said she loves her Janome HD three thousand because it's mechanical with a zigzag. Yeah. 
Oh, there we go. So cool. You're up to 272 watching you, Ian. Sweet. We've got about another 15 minutes. I'm going to hang out for another 15 minutes, and then I'm going to jump off of here and start sewing these rows together. I, I, I got to finish the row. I got to finish each row. Excuse me. I got to finish putting together the rows, and then I'll start sewing the rows together. But I should have this quilt top done by the end of the night for sure. So I do need, I do need to run to Harris Teeters after this and get some Twitter. things for the week. Here's Twitter. Here's Twitters. We don't have those back home. So I was like, Becca was like, we have Harris Teeters here. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Christina's giggling and saying, go ahead, touch that funny looking pizza cutter. I dare you. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, Adam says, I bet a rotary cutter cuts a pizza really well. I better than does. those blunt pizza cuts. For I sure. agree. Also, you, I, I don't, I, just curious. Yeah. How many of you have heard of kitchen shears? Scissors for the kitchen. I So I have a pair of kitchen shears in, you use my, in my kitchen, but I've never used them for pizza. So I have never used kitchen shears for anything, really. Yeah. I've always seen them like in a, in a knife set. And yeah. then I met Jason who uses... Scissors in the kitchen for everything. Cutting pizza, cutting chicken, cutting pasta, cutting whatever. Anything that needs cutting, he pulls out a pair of scissors for. And I was like, that's weird. Why would you do that? Yeah. And um, I'm going to tell a story on my mother-in-law. Uh-oh. When I first started sewing, I saved up and used a 50% off coupon and bought a pair of 8-inch gingers from mm. Joann's. Those nice, big, heavy metal ones. Absolutely. And I was so excited because I knew Ginger was a good scissor brand mm -hmm. and they were going to be sharp and it was my first pair of real fabric scissors. I had been buying Fiskars and sharing them with paper. This was going to be my fabric scissors. And one day those scissors came up missing and uh -oh. I couldn't find them. I was like, man, I must have misplaced them. I must have put them in a drawer somewhere and I just could not find them anywhere. Uh oh. A few months go by, I'm at my mother-in-law's house in her kitchen <gasps> and guess what she was oh, using no. in her kitchen? My oh, gingers. No. Yeah. Oof. Jason, <laughs> Jason was so kind. He was like, go to the quilt shop just go buy another pair just just go buy another pair <laughs> so i i like i didn't even he didn't even let me i didn't even have a chance to complain about it. he was like just go get another yeah. pair <laughs> yeah. uh debbie is saying no sound or my headphones died i believe that your headphones may have died because i'm going to check the settings real quick and make sure that we didn't lose here we have i'll watch sound live here nope i have sound over here no, we have sound. So it looks like your headphones. <laughs> Debbie she says my hear. headphones. <laughs> oh, God. Your headphones died, Debbie. Sorry to hear that. Or sorry not to hear that in your case. <laughs> oh, man. I take mine to... Oh, okay. Joy T says, I take mine to the Chinese buffet to co open the crab legs. She's talking about her um, yeah, yeah, kitchen yeah. shears, not her sewing okay. shears. Was there smoke coming out of your ears back then? <laughs> yes, there was. Goodness like, gracious. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. 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 I uh, and I, uh, Jason knew about how, like, he understood because prior to that, God love this man, I had gotten, because I wanted, like, I want a ginger. Yeah. I use Kai now. I yeah. love Kai. I will buy Kai over um gingers because they're both sharp mm -hmm. but i i feel like i get less hand fatigue with the kais that's fair so because i don't think they're as heavy anyway yeah um the gingers i was really excited about them and i wanted embroidery snips yeah. and my dressing shears so the first one i bought was the embroidery snips mm -hmm. little four inch scissors and i kept them in my sewing room and jason came downstairs one day while i was sewing and he picked them up and started clipping his fingernails with them right that face that was the face that I gave him, right? Like, I was like, what are you doing? He was like, my nails are long. I need to trim them. I was like, use something else. Anything. Not else. those. So I, I gave him. Gosh. That. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It, 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 speaking of lovely Jason. Yeah, lovely I love, Jason. Oh I love him to death. I really do. <laughs> He's a great guy. Uh, it, is, it, is, it has made me a little nervous <laughs> because I have been, so I am in the basement <laughs> and I have... Twice now, <laughs> been asleep, 
and not known that Jason has come down to, he grabbed the turkey and the ham out of the refrigerator. There wasn't enough refrigerator in the main refrigerator. So they, 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 they <laughs> there wasn't the, enough refrigerator in the refrigerator. There wasn't enough refrigerator for the refrigerator. <laughs> um, they came down and they, they put the, um, ham and the turkey down the in the basement refrigerator. Totally yeah. cool. Like I, no problem there. But I woke up Thanksgiving morning and like opened up the refrigerator and both the items were gone. And I'm sitting there kind of confused because I was like, there's no way that he came down here and I didn't hear him. But he did, apparently. And then uh, the toilet broke last night. The handle uh, broke and uh, he came down apparently at some point early in the morning. I never heard it. Never heard it at all, which is funny because normally I sleep very lightly. So normally I don't hear, I, normally I hear things and this time I did not, so. My sister's leaving, you can just tell them. Okay, uh, Becca's sister's leaving. Bye, nice to meet, meet you and see you again. Well, I met you before. Well, I know, but good to see you again. Um, so yeah, Becca's sister is headed out the door. So uh, she was hanging out with, with everybody for a little bit. Pizza would look cute with pinking shears, says Adam. That would be pretty funny, Adam. Did you hear Adam's? I barely heard. <laughs> Adam said pizza would look cute with pinking shears. <laughs> uh, we also have uh, Jojo is asking, Ian, how's your butt? <sighs> My butt is doing well. Thank you very much. It is uh, healing. I'm sitting on the donut right now, and it does, if I sit for long periods of time, it does start to hurt again, but it is getting better. It is healing slowly, bit by bit. I do want the tulip pink scissors, though. Yeah. Because they're pretty. <laughs> but they would give me the hand fatigue. I also want the tulip pink rotary cutter because it's pretty and it's heavy, but I'm so used to my Martelli, I know I would never use I, it. I can't. So I can't justify the no. $70, eight, whatever it is for that. Or for the, like the scissors I would I probably use. Yes, yes, definitely. And I, I would like to have the small ones and the big ones. Just because yeah. I think I think Tula hardware is beautiful. It is, it is. But I, I, I can't. I can't justify the expense because I've got Kai's that are beautiful and I know I'm going to use the Kai's. Yeah, absolutely. I've got the Martelli rotary cutter and I'm addicted to that. Yeah. So those are, I think those are things that like, if I got them for a Christmas gift, mm -hmm. I would consider keeping them and I would put them maybe in my travel box. So... Oh, did somebody gosh. just say yay for Ian's butt? Yeah, Adam said yeah. yay for Ian's butt. Yay for Ian's butt. It's mm -hmm. getting there. It's getting there. Um, Tracy, I was looking at Tracy's comment. My first husband used my gear. Oh my gosh. AstroTurf for the iguana <laughs> tank. I thought I was safe because I left, uh, because I'm left handed, but, but forgot he was too. My son admitted a couple months later what happened. Oh, oh my gosh. Obviously. That is why you divorced him, because he's now your first husband and no longer your current husband. <laughs> that would have been instant grounds for diverse, divorce. Uh, I do love my Tula, Tula Pink uh, rotary cutter, but I am now addicted to the Martari, Marte, I can't Martelli. Talk, Martelli cutter. That is the cutter I use. I don't get the hand fatigue that I would with the Tula cutter. It's, so it, I swear it's because when you're using that rotary cutter, you're not twisting yes. your arm. Yes. It's staying parallel and yep. straight. So you're you, you're able to just use your your bicep. You're just extending your arm. Exactly. Exactly. I, I get more, well, and now I should say with some of Fallon's uh, rulers, it doesn't happen as often, but... I get more hand fatigue in the hand that's holding the ruler yeah. than the rotary cutter. Yeah. But with ha Fallon's trim locks mm -hmm. and her slide lock, that alleviates the hand fatigue and the ruler hand. So between the two of those things, I feel like I can cut for days. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Just came on. I was watching Yellowstone, says Kate. Um, so do you have a, did you have a successful shopping mm -hmm. day yesterday? Kate, Define we, successful. Bank account successful or ooh, stash successful? <laughs> ooh, that's that's a good clarification that that needs to be made. Yes, we had a very successful day. Lots of fabric was purchased. Lots of shops were were checked out. Um, had a lot of fun everywhere. Mm. Uh, I found some very unique fabric that I had never oh, found before. Sorry, you're totally fine. Um, I found some new fabric that I'd never seen before at what, Sisters. No, what is the name of that Three store? Little Birds. Three. No, the first one. 
Oh, 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 Material Girls. Material Girl. Why can't yes. I get that name down? In La Plata. Yes, in La, La Plata. Plata. Not La Plata. Uh, La Plata. There is some Bernina fabric that I found there. And I am oh, going to Oh, and Mary do... got Bernina ribbon. Yeah, yeah, she She's did. Really I've never seen that. those before. So I will be doing a hurl video, haul video, when I get back mm -hmm. to Texas and show it all off, which should give you a kind of indication that my trip may be coming to an end. Stay tuned. I, if they were listening at the start of the video, did I did I hint? Did I give it away? You gave a very big hint. So if you want to dissect, go back and listen to the beginning of the video. There you go. There you go. Uh, Marie Flowers says it's going to freeze here in DFW overnight. I'm headed out to cover my plants. Is it going to freeze? Yeah, it'll freeze here too. Apparently, it's going oh, to be 28 fine. tonight. Cool. So weird. maybe my bedroom will get cooler. Too. Right. Listen, our ceiling fan died. Yeah. Um, it, the it still gets power, but the belt in the ceiling fan just is no longer working. <laughs> so when you turn on the fan portion of the ceiling fan, you just hear it doesn't want to work. Yep. So I have to have air moving. I don't like sleeping when I'm hot. So I have cracked the window in our bedroom, but there's no air moving. And if you shut the door. There's no air moving in the bedroom either. Yeah. So we've been sleeping with the door open to keep it kind of cooler. I want to buy just like a tower fan or an oscillating fan. I've looked on Amazon for it. But the problem is those are like 40 or 60 bucks. Yeah. And I can get a 52 inch ceiling fan for like a hundred. Exactly. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to buy the ceiling fan. Yep. But I also know that if I buy the ceiling fan, Jason's going to know I'm going to spend a hundred dollars. And he's really of the opinion that we should not spend any money before Christmas. Yep. Period. So I'm trying to get by without the ceiling fan especially mm -hmm. because he's gonna have to install it and then maybe santa will bring me one for christmas <laughs> there you go um your sister sent you a message by the way oh, okay um i got distracted by it i was like oh 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 um where was i uh yeah so uh here's a good question <laughs> from I know, right? Do you want to read it? Uh, I, don't I, have, I got it. I yeah. got it. She said, hey, because they must have been watching the driver back down. Yeah. Hey, I think that Amazon driver knocked a couple of tree branches off in your yard. There's some laying across your driveway. <laughs> Whatever. He hit a tree. It's, I don't um, care. Like he, he like, They're probably uh, small-ish. But either way, like our trees in our yard are not for decoration. Right. They're wild trees. Yeah. Like we're fine. Yeah. <laughs> But let's just hope we can move them. Um, what did Ian do to your ceiling fan? Nothing! No, Nothing. he was not hanging from the ceiling fan. Kate was... is asking, yay, did you find some of that tulip fabric you needed? I did not, but somebody very, very kind uh, reached out and let me know that they had some coming my way. So thank you to them very, very much. It is incredibly kind of them to do that um let's see there's somebody oh uh hi ian and everyone else from queensland australia hi. good day mate uh you're welcome um i also enjoy what you and becca bought brought from the shop hop that you and becca did uh jojo said mom had a pair of scissors uh for uh, for very for various things pizza wrapping paper string crafts etc do not touch her sewing scissors deaf or permanent grounding. Goodness gracious. Uh, Adam, I was after the seed stitch uh, fabric in with the gray background to it. It was from uh, the homemade line that Tula Pink did. And thankfully, I got what I needed. So, uh, <laughs> Debbie said, I told my husband he had to buy me new scissors and he stays away from the new scissors. Anna said, Anna says in quotes, wild trees, I'm dying. So anywho, guys, it is almost four o'clock. It is time for me to jump off here. I got to go get some groceries from Harris Teeters. And then I uh, am going to come back and work some more on putting this quilt top together. I've got a couple more rows to assemble and then I'm going to put the rows together. So thank you so much, guys, for joining me today. I really appreciate y'all joining. And don't forget that uh, I'm gonna, I will show this off either on Instagram or in another video, definitely in the recap video that I do at the end of the month and all that good stuff. So be on the lookout for it. I definitely, 
Sorry, I just saw Michelle's comment. Which, uh, which one? I should buy Jason a ceiling fan for Christmas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, for, and my gift will be he will install it. There you go. There you go. You bought it for him and he's going to have to install it. You're welcome. Sorry. Um, Debbie uh, uh, says, I think YouTube removes the chat 24 hours or something. No, typically if the settings are set when the live goes live, uh, the chat will remain with this video permanently. But it does take time to process. But it does take time to yes. process. So be advised that uh, it does it does take 24 hours to 48 hours usually for the comments or the live chat to process as well. So uh, Joy T asked me to pick up some coffee creamer for her. You got it. Absolutely. Totally. 100%. Right? Right there. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. And thank you, Becca, once again for letting me use her space. And I suppose. Yes, and, pfft, and Ooh, hanging out with me nuts. and uh, I know which one reading the are. chat and all that kind of stuff. She's looking at the donuts that I got earlier. <laughs> There's today. a Boston cream There's in a bo here that's I bought that one especially me. for you. So oh, it's going to get eaten. Okay. We're excellent. going to do that. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me today. Remember, guys, normal is just a setting on the dryer. I will see you next Sunday for a haul video. We'll talk about the quilt shops that we went to and all the goodies that we found in those quilt shops. I will see you all very, very soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys.